you're joining me on this beautifully fresh striped fairway now it looks amazing green keepers done an immaculate job however grass now is tight it's short and you know what becomes with that fear fear from 20 yards off the green now just to add to today's fear look on the on the green on the fringe of the green at the back you're going to find a flock of swans if that's what the correct terminology is anyway there's loads of them so i'm not even going to demonstrate what you may do from here which may be the fin over the back and obviously if there's some swans there you can imagine there's a pond over there as well so i'm not going to demonstrate the fin purely for the safety of the swans now we are going to be talking about three different types of shots i've got three clubs in my hand i've got a nine iron i've got a pitching wedge and i've got a sandwich pretty much one of your kind of your standard bottom of the bag obviously a lot of golfers nowadays have gap wedges and lob wedges in there i've gone for more of a traditional kind of look to my kind of my repertoire for today's video but you can obviously change this up as you see fit you may prefer an eight iron or a seven you may prefer a gap instead of a pitch you may prefer a lob instead of a sand i'm not not too bothered it's more about the quality of shots and the techniques that we're going to be using for these three shots to get started we're going to be looking at the nine iron shot okay so this is like your little chip and run shot this is how golfers get handicaps down because from around this range if you said to yourself if 100 percent of the time you hit the green and two putted then i'm pretty sure a lot of you golfers watching now would be lowering your scores whether it's from 28 handicap down to 18 this is the area i know golfers miss we lose balls off tees etc so it's always difficult everyone's different but i will guarantee where everybody is the same through experience of coaching is not being able to chip onto the green and two put 100 percent of the time so i've got the nine iron i'm going to go as simple as i possibly can I'm going to try and play the ball. I'm going to put the ball in the back of my stance, but I'm not going to put it in line with my back foot or on the outside of my back foot. Really important this. I'm going to put it on the inside of my back foot. It still gives me that descending blow, but too far behind, what we often see is the hands start to take over naturally, whether you want them to or not, and we get the thin shot or over time if you've figured out how to not use the hands too much that club comes down too steep and then hits the top quarter of the golf ball and you kind of almost get the same style of shot that thins over the back so i want to keep the golf ball within your stance so ball position goes inside the right foot i'm going to take my normal grip but what i'm actually going to do is going to stand a little bit closer and just get the shaft of the club upright a little bit more not fully onto the toe just so the heat just so the angle i would say in general let's the, let's generalize the shaft angle at around about 45 to 50 degrees i'm going to lift it up so it's about 60 so 90 45 up to about 60 give or take okay i don't have my protractor with me right now so inside the right foot posture wise i'm more stood up right okay so i'm not over the ball like i would be for a normal golf shot i'm much taller in my posture i'm going to go for pretty straight arms okay we're going to go for a little bit more of a dead arm swing here and i'm going to try and minimal movement with my wrist but i'm not going to keep them rigid i'm not going to squeeze this club so my hands can't move i'm going to hold the club eight out of ten so what will happen maybe a little bit in my transition there'll be a little bit of movement from the club head but not much at all the golf club head will still move with your golf swing it will still move around the arc if i don't move the club head and i turn i actually end up closing the face and only delivering the leading edge to the club to the ball and that's what i don't want to do so i'm going to allow the golf club to rotate on the arc with my golf swing my hips are also going to be relatively active through this as well so and i see this a lot of golfers they try not to move it's like you almost kind of stay so still so scared what happens at impact is that your hands take over and that is just your hands trying to help you out all right you're trying not to move you're trying to make a movement where less moves so less goes wrong that's logical that is really logical but golf is not a logical game and we all know that by now so inside the right foot 
up to 60 degrees, posture more upright, arms straighter, particularly this lead arms, keep it nice and locked. The club head's still going to move around the arc with the body. And we're going to land the ball and let it run up onto the green. Now, as a general rule of thumb, the 9-iron wants to maybe land just under halfway. Let's say a third of the way there, so it runs the rest. Now, that particular shot, not amazing. Inside of 20 feet or so, chance of two putt. Okay, we can really get better and better at making sure we understand landing distances. But that only comes with quality of ball striking. All right. The next shot we're going to do, we're going to move into the pitching wedge and we're going to move a little bit closer and we're going to move into the semi-rough because this is a shot that can save you multiples, multiple shots. Trickier this time, we've got a little bit more grass to work with and I think a lot of golfers watching this, you'll actually find that a little bit more grass under the ball, particularly on a semi-rough style of shot, helps you. You feel like you've got a little bit more cushion. That last shot I just played then is a really difficult shot. You wouldn't approach that last shot with any more loft really than that the nine iron that I just used because the the loft that the, the grass underneath the golf ball is so so tight. Little chip and runs from those tile lies are good. When you've got a little bit more of a semi-rough you can slide the wedge under there a bit easier. But this particular shot we've got the pitching wedge. And again to go from that last one where the ball position in the inside of the trail foot and up to 60 degrees, I'm going to bring us in even closer this time and try and get the shaft angle not at 90 but just under it, so between the last two. And this is where we're going to use the toe of the club a lot more. We're going to, I'm going to try and get this left hand a little bit more under the club as well. So a little grip change here. And what this is going to help you do is keep that left wrist more stable through the golf shot. Okay, you could even do it on the last shot, but more so for this style of shot where I'm really going to try and go with a dead arm movement here and not really allow any wrist hinge at all because the swing itself is going to be shorter. Again, like I said before, you can deviate with your club selection depending on the situation that you're in. Here I've got about 25, 20, I don't know, 20 yards, 25 yards or so. I'm going to get, I'm using the toe of the club. I'm going to turn this left hand underneath so I get so it locks out. So I almost get a little bit of a bowed position on the way back. And as I get the bowed position, I'm going to lead with my body. I'm going to use my body to bring the club back to the golf ball. So I'm going to use my shoulder rotation and my hip rotation. Ball pops out nice and low and it's got plenty of roll. Slightly uphill, so it's been left a little bit short but I've landed it about halfway and it's rolled to about 15 foot short or so. So I could have landed this again just past halfway and let it release up. My ball strike mark is literally on the toe side of the grooves and then that just allows me to get the heel away from the ground. It stops any sort of digging and it's just a really nice smooth movement. Again, I've got two balls on the green which I would like to think I will two put from. And also with a bit of practice, start to bring those in closer but if you've got like a, a nice little repertoire of kind of three shots in and around the greens you're going to get better at playing those three you're going to get better at getting the ball closer to the flag and we're going to be we're edging towards that 100 percent chip and two put ratio that we're looking for third and final shot comes from the rough get yourself more loft sand wedge lob wedge whatever it's going to be get yourself more loft because now we've got the grass in the way between golf club and ball we're going to require a slightly longer backswing so the club can get through the grass easier if you try and go with a pitching wedge shot from here then you're not creating much speed through the golf swing you're not creating much backswing therefore the grass is going to have a bigger say on what happens between striking of face and ball so we want to go with a little bit more loft this time I'm going to keep the ball position more central in the stance and I, but I'm just going to try and keep the arms relatively stable and the face relatively stable so almost going like a combination of the last two shots where I try and keep a bit more of a dead arm movement here again I'm using my shoulder rotation I'm allowing my hip rotation to come back as well but I'm also keeping the club head square relative to the swing arc it's not a straight golf swing we don't go straight back and straight through the golf swing moves on an arc so do not be afraid of allowing the golf club to move on its arc because we've got more loft the ball will pop up higher because i've got a higher back swing in here 
the angle of attack will be down which will also produce backspin to send the ball up into the air so for this one now don't be scared of the length of swing and then just hold into the finished position would have helped if i actually aimed and thought about how far i was going to hit it but you could see how high that golf ball went and look at my finished position maybe a finished position you think oh that ball's gonna go about 80 yards but it's not my speed has dictated how far the ball has gone my length of backswing has dictated how quality my ball striking can be to get through the grass and not allow the grass to impede the golf club before it gets to the ball and that is a really really key element to this so one of the key things i always like to say is make sure you follow through too many golfers will kind of stop shortly after and you'll notice that the club head goes past the lead wrist here and we've got a lot of bit of, a lot of cupping on this lead wrist and what's happened if that if we rewind that slowly that would have happened in and around the impact area which actually encourages the club to shallow out rather than compress down so we want to try and make sure that we can compress down through the golf ball and continue our rotation through the golf shot making sure the body's pointing out towards the target and we've got that nice follow-through position around about stomach height we've got a backswing there that was stomach to stomach okay making sure that we've got the momentum through the rotation to get the quality of ball striking that's three massively important shots that will i will i'll get you know what, I, there's not many tips i can 100 percent guarantee that will lower your handicap this is one of them use it <laughs> guys thanks for watching hit the like hit the subscribe and i'll see you next time